Good morning, Covenant family. It's Pastor David Kling, and I'm so excited to get to share worship with you today. We've got a wonderful message today from uh, one of our great, dearly beloved missionaries, Ben Mathis, who founded Mission Hope. And uh, Ben is actually retiring. So he's kind of uh, giving us his farewell sermon today. He'll be giving that sermon live in our sanctuary, and we're gonna make that recording available for you at home later. But we're going to enjoy um, that same sermon that Ben gave at a different church today, and uh, we're delighted to be able to share that recording with you. So I do hope that you're able to extend uh, warm wishes to Ben for a wonderful career in uh, ministry, and uh, we'll have more information about how you can connect with Ben at the end of today's service. But first, Let's go to a time for our children. Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Allison and Mr. Blair. And we are so excited to invite you to the Miracles of Jesus Vacation Bible School. It's going to be so fun. You betcha. It's going to be awesome. Oh, we can't wait. We are going to be talking about Jesus' love and power and how that power isn't just for you and I, Mr. Blue. It's for us to share with our friends. So we hope you'll join us. Yeah, you should come because I want to share with you. <laughs> and we'll see you there. Don't forget to register. I'll put the link below. Bye now. Bye. It's exciting that Vacation Bible School is beginning and that Mr. Blue has come to pay us a visit again. Um, let's say a prayer for all of the families that are going to be sharing Vacation Bible School with us online this week. Lord Jesus, we just pray for every child, every parent, every adult, every family who will be watching our Vacation Bible School videos. We pray that your Holy Spirit would be at work again in each of their hearts, Lord, in the way they most need to feel your love and to take their next step of faith in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Spinning a heavenly dance Oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming I hear the sound of your voice All at once it's a gentle and thundering noise Oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming Shame because of my 
We have a wonderful sermon now from Ben Mathis. I want parents to be aware that uh, Ben does talk about human trafficking. So if that's a conversation that you want to have with your children before watching this sermon or you want to watch it uh, yourselves first before sharing it with your kids, I encourage you to use your discretion in that. It's a wonderful, powerful message that was filmed uh, several months ago at a Methodist church, and I'm excited to hear Ben give it now live in our church. Uh, but without further ado, Here's Ben Mathis. Our second scripture comes from the book of Exodus, reading from chapter 6. Say therefore to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will free you from the burdens of the Egyptians and deliver you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. You shall know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. Moses told this to the Israelites, but they would not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and their cruel slavery. And from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. Let's do a little history lesson. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob wrestles with an angel of the Lord, and his name gets changed to Israel. means he who wrestles with God. From then on, Jacob and his family are known as the Israelites. There are about 70 of them. He has one daughter, Dinah, that we know of, and he's got at least 12 sons, and his favorite son was named Joseph. And all the big brothers got together and they did what big brothers throughout history have wanted to do with little brothers. They sold him into slavery and got rid of him. Don't tell me if you've ever wanted to do that. Just, just keep going. The remaining family is wandering in Canaan and a famine hits the land and they've got to go somewhere. So they go to Egypt to discover that Joseph, the little brother, is now number two in control of all of Egypt. He welcomes them with open arms and they live happily ever after. Now jump forward 430 years, there's no longer 70 Israelites. There are close to two or three million Israelites in Egypt. Pharaoh is scared to death of them because these are very powerful people. And Pharaoh doesn't believe that they would have his back if there's ever an uprising. So Pharaoh set out to do two specific things, honestly. He set out to work them so hard that they would be so tired that they'd be too tired to have any more children. And then he enslaved them. We'll leave them right there for now. Go 7,000 miles from Egypt to the west and you are in the Laredo region of Peru. This is the home of the Apayacu River, the village of Comandancia, 
And I know you know it is the home of King Wawa of the Yagua Indians. I have an audience with the king. He comes in full regalia. His crown is made up of the tail feathers of macaw parrots. Around his neck, he has the bones of a Bushmaster snake. All of his exposed skin is painted red, and he's wearing a grass skirt. He's followed by an entourage of warriors who are pounding drums and playing pan flutes. They march up to me, and they stop. And the king says, I have something to tell you. I said, tell it. This is so profound. The king looked at me and said, I want you to know that we are more than pictures in a book. Wow. He said, we laugh, we love, we cry, and we pray for America. You tell them that. And then he told me all the things that were happening in our country. And I said, you know, King, there's no radio, television, internet, there's no communication out here. How do you find out what's happening in the rest of the world? And he described that fast boats, a canoe with an outboard motor, will come zooming down the river and somebody in the canoe might have a newspaper and they throw it up on the bank of the river, they find the newspaper, everybody reads it, and that's how they get their news. Now go 10,000 miles to the east of the Laredo region of Peru and you hit Mount Agung, an active volcano in Indonesia. On the far side of Mount Agung, a truck is bouncing down a dirt road. A magazine is either tossed out the window or it falls off the back of the truck, just like the canoe in Peru. A young girl named Chica finds the magazine. She opens it and reads it, and it changes her life forever. Chica looks in the magazine, and she sees beautiful girls who are wearing beautiful clothes. Then she looks closer, and she learns about these beautiful girls are wearing makeup. And Chica decides she will have beautiful clothes and makeup as well. So she decides to leave her village of Tianyar, go to the city of Dimpazar, the capital, and she gets a job in a restaurant. She makes money. She buys dresses and makeup, and you would think she would live forever, but she doesn't. The owner of the restaurant is a lot like Pharaoh. He's very conniving. After she'd been working for a while, he came to her one night and said, ah, one of the girls didn't show up for a traditional folk dance. Chica, could you wear this outfit and maybe dance? Look, she said, I'd be glad to. She dances for a few weeks. She makes more money, can buy more clothes, more makeup. And then he makes his move. He comes back to her again and says, oh, Chica, a girl didn't show up for this club. Could you wear this outfit and go and dance? And this outfit is very skimpy. But she decides, you know, he's been so helpful to me. I shouldn't say no, so she agrees to do it. She puts on this very risque outfit, goes to the restaurant club to discover, in their words, it's what's called a go-go club. And Chica is dancing in a glass cage. And very soon thereafter finds that she is being sold to five and six different men a night. 6,000 miles to the west is the Aturi Forest of Northeast Congo. There's a group of people that live there that because of genetics, lack of sunshine, poor diet, they're only about this tall. They're called the pygmies. Tragically, some of the tribes in the area do not consider the pygmies to be human. And even today, they are hunted for their meat. The Mokpala is a tribe that has enslaved part of the pygmies. They want their land. If you say something to the Mokpala, they say, oh, no, 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 we, we pay for everything. And the classic response is of a pygmy grandmother, less than four feet tall, who put 125 pounds of charcoal on her back, carried it for miles through the jungle, delivered it to her Mokpasta, Mokpala, it's hard to say, Mokpala master, try that one time, and he paid her. He gave her two tiny bananas for all of her work. 1,380 miles south by southeast is Tanzania. A single mother with two children works for a month to make $15. That's 50 cents a day. Her best friend tells her about a great opportunity. If she's willing to go 4,800 miles to the east to a city called Bangkok, Thailand, she can get a job in a restaurant as a hostess, and they will pay her $500 a month, more money than this woman can fathom. So she risks everything. She goes to Thailand, and in less than two weeks, her sponsors 
have taken her passport, sold her into prostitution, and told her, if you want your passport back, you have to pay us $7,000. It's estimated today that there's somewhere between 21 and 46 million people in the world who are trapped in some sort of human trafficking or slavery. But I believe it's a great number than that because I also believe there are a great number of us who are enslaved in, in what I call spiritual slavery. I've been coming here 15 years. So I know you well enough, you won't think I'm bragging, but you need to, you know, I live in Northeast Georgia and I'm, I'm pretty proud to say I've got a pretty successful strawberry farm in Northeast Georgia. I, uh, I have one plant and the thing just won't die. That's, that's it. I get somewhere between three and five strawberries a year and it's a big deal. I watch him grow and when he gets just right, I pick the strawberry, take it in the house, I wash it off, put it in the refrigerator, and the next morning I very unceremoniously drop it into my smoothie, grind it up and chug it down like I own the world. I was watching this strawberry, went out to pick it, and something had taken a bite out of the side of my strawberry, just one bite. Didn't eat the whole thing, just one little bite. Well, that lets the ants in, it ruined my strawberry. That's exactly what I did. I got another strawberry and the same thing happened again. I got a, a third strawberry. Almost my whole crop is being chewed on by something and it's really insulting. Well, I decided I was going to capture whoever the villain was doing this. I took a have a heart trap, filled it with peanut butter, set it outside. And the next morning I had it. I had it. Walked outside and there he was in my trap, an obese possum. This possum is so big and fat, he can't move, but he can turn his head up at me like this, like, this isn't going to end well. Oh, I looked at him. I sat down beside that possum, and I told him everything I've ever wanted to tell a possum. When I finished, I carried him off into the woods. I opened the trap up, and I said, now go on, get. He just sat there. Go, you're free. Get out of here. He looked up at me like, if I step out of this cage, you're going to shoot me. I said, go, just go. I went around behind the cage and I poked him with my foot. He still sat there. I said, would you please go? He walks out a little bit and he looks up at me like, all right, shoot me, get it over. I said, I'm not going to shoot you. Just go. You're free. And finally, he broke into what I would consider a classic possum trot. And he's waddling off into the forest. And I thought, you know what? That's the people of Israel. They couldn't hear the Lord speak to them through Moses because they were so depressed and so discouraged and so trapped in their slavery. He's the same thing. He couldn't take his freedom because he's caught in this trap and he's just like the people of Israel. So I have named that possum Israel, by the way. And then I thought, you know what? He's just like Chica. Why in the world doesn't Chica run away from this human trafficking? Why don't the pygmies make little bitty bow and arrows and little bitty machetes and why don't they fight for their freedom? Why don't the Tanzanian mother run to somebody's embassy and stand there screaming until somebody pays attention to them? And then I thought about us. We're the same way. Why do you allow guilt to be a way of life? Why is it so much easier to be bitter than to get better? Why are you trapped being a cynic instead of being creative? Why do we allow ourselves to be shoved into some spiritual cage that traps us and holds us back from a loving, growing relationship with Jesus? My next door neighbor is Dub Anderson, where I live. Dub went to the University of Georgia, go dogs. And when he graduated, he decided he would go to New York City to seek his fame and fortune in the world of advertising. So as a good Southern boy, Dub went to his mama and said, Mama, I'm going to go to New York City, seek my fame and fortune in advertising. And as a good Southern mother, she said, Oh my goodness, you can't go to New York City. We're having meatloaf tomorrow. <laughs> well, he finally got to go. He had a successful career. He came back. He's got a boy named Benji. Benji Anderson just sold his hog farm. Benji raises what's called heritage hogs. Or as Benji describes it, these are pigs that lead a pretty good life. They've got to be three or 400 pounds before he can sell them. That's a pretty big bunch of pig. 
Well, he can't figure out how to get the pig to go up the ramp into the truck so he could take him to market. It finally dawned on him how to do it, and he figured out how to use 1.7 ounces to move 400 pounds of pig. He didn't feed them for two days. Then he put a ramp down from the truck, goes right up to the cage, and he lined the ramp with Krispy Kreme donuts that weigh 1.7 ounces, and the pigs would eat their way right up the ramp and right into the cage and right off to market. And aren't we just like that? Aren't we just like that? Come on. Oh, I'll just have a, a, a little lust. I'll just have a taste of greed. I'll just be angry for a little while. I'll just be depressed for a week or so. I'll just be mean to these few people. I'll just try to hide over here. And before we know it, we've worked our way right up the ramp and we are trapped all the time while God is calling to us saying, I have come to set you free. I have come to deliver you. I have come to ransom you, to pay the price for your life so that you can be free. Thank goodness. Eventually the people of Israel heard that, didn't they? And Moses led them out of Egypt, got them to the promised land and they were free. Thank the Lord that Chica finally heard it. Chica met one of our staff members named Angela. Angela built a trusting relationship with that precious girl. They became friends and Angela talked Chica into leaving human trafficking behind. We got her into our safe house, led her to Christ, got her a new job in our coffee shop. She's in therapy. She's doing great. She's making money. She still buys clothes and makeup, but she loves the Lord and she's free. Justin Wren moved into the Aturi forest with the pygmies and discovered there was something that the Mokpala wanted more than land. They wanted water. So Justin Wren uses the living water of Jesus Christ to witness to the pygmies. At the same time, he's drilling wells on Mokpala land, getting them to agree to turn their land back over to the pygmies. He's leading the pygmies to Jesus and setting them free. My friend Irene from Australia, who I met in Bangkok, raised the $7,000 to buy the Tanzanian mother her freedom, bought her a plane ticket back to Tanzania, and then got her a $1,500 grant so she could go home with her head held high and enough money to start a business, and she renewed her relationship with Jesus and the whole process, and the whole bunch of them are free. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, if we were Pentecostal, the music would start right now. You'd be up dancing and screaming and hollering and having a big time but we're not. <laughs> we're Methodist. <laughs> so at best, we'll just smile and think, well, well, isn't that nice? <laughs> Why do you come to church? Ben, I come to church because if I want Sunday supper, I have to go to church first. I go to church because mama said we're going to church. I go to church to hear Brother Wayne and to hear the music. I come to church to see my friends. I come to church because it's the only time all week I'm around another human being. I come to church to pray. Do you ever come to church thinking, well, what if it were today? What if it were today? What if it were today that the, the, the switch gets flipped? The lights come on. I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I, I once was enslaved, but, but now I'm free. What if it were today that I finally got rid of that thing that holds me back in life? What if it were today? When I count to three, say your name right out loud. One, two, three. Not bad. One more time. One, two, three. Much better. Now, I want you to think about that burden in your life. There's a wonderful woman named Bernice Johnson Reagan who sings a song called Since I Laid My Burden Down. It's magnificent. It's a Mississippi Delta spiritual. I feel better, so much better since I laid my burdens down. I feel better, so much better since I laid my burden down. What's that burden in your life? When you get caught in traffic, what crosses your mind? Put your head on the pillow, what clips at your heels? 
What is that yeah but in your life? Oh, I do so much yeah but. I did this and got away with it. I did this and got caught. I'm addicted to this. I struggle with this. I've taken on this attitude. I've let my peers decide how I'm going to be. What is that thing that holds you back? And I want you to think about it. And I want us to go back to the word and listen to what God told Moses to say to the Israelites because God told me to say it to you. So when I say, say your name, I want you to say it right out loud. Because God told me to say to you, I have come to set you free. Say your name. <laughs> Everybody look in the back of your shirt. See if it's on there. Let's try that one more time. God said to Ben, go tell, say your name. I have come to set you free from the burden of, think about it. I have come to deliver you, literally to snatch you back from the burden of, think about it. I have come to redeem you with my outstretched arm and mighty acts of judgment. Redeeming is to pay the price for, and outstretched arm is Jesus. He stretched his arms out and paid the price for you so that you can be free. So all we can do now is stop and pray. And I want us to pray that you will take that burden, whatever it is, and I want you to set that burden down on the floor of this church, and I want you to leave it there, and don't worry about it. Wayne and Kara can clean that mess up later on, but I want you to leave it on the floor of this church. Let's pray together. Right now, Lord Jesus, the people in this place who have carried burdens on their hearts for years, for weeks, for days, for hours, Father, today we've just had enough. It's time to, to lay that burden down and to set it on the floor of this church and to be done with it. So in the strong name of Jesus, Lord, I take my burden and I lay my burden down. For Jesus' sake, amen. Take a deep breath, come on. <sighs> okay, you took, you took a setback, turned it into a comeback. What do you do with that? You go to the Word. You heard what Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything will be all right. That means pray. Pray every single day, but don't pray, oh Lord, help me get rid of my depression. Oh Lord, help me get over being angry. No, you've already done that. Pray, thank you, Lord, for taking that from me. Thank you, Lord, for freeing me from that. Thank you, Lord, for being my God and I am your people set me free. Thank you, Jesus. It means get into the word. I'm telling you what I've been doing. I hike a bunch. I hike four to eight miles a day. And I read an article and, and it just changed my life. It said, when you hike, chant scripture to yourself or chant this. And it says, Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on me. And now I've built that into my hiking. And in my mind, I'm saying, Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on me. In the rhythm as I hike and I look up and I've gone miles and nothing has come to me from the inside or the outside that bothers me. And I've gone for miles walking with Jesus. Try that. And above everything else, get involved in a ministry. God does not set us free to sit beside the possum cage. He sets us free to serve and to rejoice. If you were here last time I came, I asked you to help me with 900 families in Bali, Lombok, and Papua, Indonesia. It's over 3,000, closer to 3,500 children. You did that. And we are using John 3.16 as the foundation to lead all of these precious families to Jesus while at the same time teaching them how to have healthy, strong children and changing their lives. You helped us do that. Well, now we've got a new target area in kind of East Central Dominican Republic, a target audience of 60,000 people. We're using 12 indigenous pastors and we're going after the fact that there are just thousands of young people who are being dragged into drugs and gangs and being enslaved in that. And instead, we want to set them free in the name of Jesus. So I need somebody from here to go to the Dominican Republic and see what we're doing. I'll let you pay your own way. <laughs> I've got just a few of these left. It describes it. Wayne has more information. He'll be getting more. But I'm serious. If you've been set free from a burden, Replace that burden with serving the Lord and you will be forever, ever, ever grateful for it. And I just can't think of anything better than that. So God bless you.
You stay strong. God bless America. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, for the freedom that's ours in Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. For relieving us of our burdens that we finally laid them down. Oh Lord, we rejoice. Put a spring in our step as we leave this place. Enable us to go from here preparing to serve as free people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Wow, Ben. Thank you so much for that incredible message. And we're thankful for you. We are so thankful for the work of Ben Mathis. And we're going to miss you. Uh, so uh, please know that we are going to be praying for you as you uh, spend more time with your family and begin this next season of ministry. Even though Ben is retiring, the work of uh, Mission Hope, formerly Rivers of the World, goes on. So I'm going to include uh, their giving link alongside covenants during our time of offering. And this is a moment where we can really take Ben's message to heart, that we have been set free in Christ. There is nothing that holds us back. Everything we have belongs to God, and so we can dedicate our finances and also our lives to Him. So let's come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the incredible gift of freedom that you give us. We pray that you would set each of us free, Lord, so that we could be generous with our money, but also generous with ourselves, God. Be calling each of us, Lord, into the, uh, uh, the work that you have for us to do to set others free in your name. We pray that you would receive these gifts in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is a wonderful Sunday to uh, consider how we can give our lives to others as Ben Mathis has given his life to the ministry of the gospel. So let's come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today um, just mindful that you have made all things, that everything in creation 
is a gift from your hand. That there are so many troubles and challenges that confront us, and yet it is that same mighty hand that protects us and sustains us. We pray that you would be with our essential workers, Lord, who continue to risk their lives for our public health. We pray, Lord Jesus, uh, for all those who are sick and suffering. We pray, Jesus, that you would be healing them supernaturally by your mighty name, by the power of your resurrection, by the redeeming blood that you have shed for us. We pray that you would heal these people by the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask God that you would be working in each of our hearts, in our collective lives as a church, that you would be calling us to minister to those who need to hear your good news, who need to receive the grace of your hand through our hands, God. We pray that you would give us that courage, you would give us that insight, Lord, you would give us that prompting from the Holy Spirit to respond with joy and with love the lives of whomever you call us to meet. We ask God that you would be with Ben Mathis, that he would feel your deep blessing after so many years of faithful service. We pray for his legacy at Mission Hope, that that ministry would continue to honor and glorify your name to the ends of the earth. We pray for your Holy Spirit to be with all missionaries around the globe during this difficult year, both here in our country and around the world, and that you would be strengthening them and supplying them with the resources that they need to continue to do your gospel work. We ask these things in the name of uh, your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
What a wonderful worship service. It's uh, a deep joy to get to share this gospel ministry with Ben, who has become a good friend to me personally over the last several years. And if you'd like to connect with Ben and let him know how much his ministry has meant to you, you can reach out to him, and I've got that email address uh, there for you on the screen. It's also available um, in our blog on our website. So if you subscribe, to our emails, which I encourage you to do. Um, you will have that there, but it's also on our blog. So there on your screen, you can see our www.covhsv.org backslash blog. And you can go there and find the worship resources for today's date. And uh, you've got Ben's information for you there, as well as um, discussion questions about his sermon. So I'd encourage you to continue the conversation, to take his challenge to the next step with the people in your home, your family members, or maybe a friend who also watched today's service. And those discussion questions will kind of keep the uh, conversation going. And I can't think of a better way to end today's service than by saying together the words of our charge. So let's join together. Wherever we go, God has sent us. Wherever we are, God has put us there. He has a purpose in our being there. He has something he wants to do through us, wherever we are. Now go forth with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.